All right, what's up everybody? It's your boy Akeen and welcome to today's blog. Here to give you my preview for week seven of the 2014 college football season. I'm here to give you my key matches and my predictions. Starting with a great game between Washington State and Stanford. Stanford still ranked top 25 even though they have two losses and I even predict that they're gonna have their third loss come this matchup. Now this game is gonna be played at Stanford and Stanford's defense is pretty great but their offense has not really been playing up to par. And they're playing against a great offensive team coming from the Washington Cougars, led by quarterback Connor Halliday, who's leading all quarterbacks in receiving and, and passing yards this season. He's coming off of a 700-yard performance last week and a close loss to California. And that, that was a great matchup, and I still think he's going to explode offensively in this particular game. Now, Stanford's defense is probably going to cause some problems for Washington, but as far as Stanford's offense, I'm not really impressed with their performance this season led by quarterback Keith Hogan. I think they're going to struggle and I think the offense for um, Washington State is going to get enough points to pull off a win and I think it's going to be a close victory. Upset game of the week. It's going to be this for this week. It's going to be in the Red River rivalry between my Texas Longhorns against number 11 OU. Now OU suffered their first loss last season, last week against TCU. And they're playing against a decent Texas defense. Offense with Tyrone Ty Swoops leading the way at quarterback. Still shaky with that. He might not even start for this matchup but he should get the start not because of enough experience. But I still think that um, uh, my Texas Longhorns is going to pull off the upset against OU and this is going to be big time bragging rights this upcoming season and it's, this, this, this game even affects national recruiting as far as players coming out of high school. If Texas win this game, this would definitely raise up more recruits for Texas Longhorns for the next upcoming seasons. So I'm going to have to go with my Longhorns over the Sooners. Next game, another upset. I'm going to have to go with number 23 Missouri over number 13, UGA. Now, Georgia has a great running back and Heisman, one of the Heisman front runners, and um, Ty Gurley. But their offense, other than opposite, outside of Gurley, they really have no offense as far as their passing game. And they're going to have to do a lot better in order to try to make it to the SEC championship. Now, this season for Missouri, they only had suffered one defeat to Indiana. So they're still um, undefeated in SEC play. And I think there could be a good dark horse in that SEC conference and possibly make it to the college football. Ball playoff. So I'm going to have to go with Missouri over Georgia. Next game, a Big Ten matchup between Northwestern and um, Minnesota. Now, Northwestern is 3-2, and two, but they're undefeated in conference play. As same as for uh, Minnesota, they're actually 4-1. They suffered their first their first loss against TCU, but they're undefeated 1-0 in the Big Ten Conference. And this is going to be an interesting matchup for you guys. For the first two weeks of the season, Northwestern struggled, but their defense improved, and they've actually been showing up for the past three weeks, including an upset loss last week against Wisconsin, in which they won 20-14. And with their improvement in defense and due to the poor play of, uh, on the offensive side against TCU, uh, against a great defense for TCU. I'm going to have to go with Northwestern in this one because of the improvement on the defensive side. They pulled off a great upset last week against the Badgers and I think that even though the game is at Minnesota, I think that Northwestern is going to spoil Minnesota's hopes even though I do like Minnesota a lot. Next game, an ACC matchup between number 22 Georgia Tech who is undefeated against only one loss for Duke. Now Duke can pull off this upset but Georgia Tech, this is another dark horse to make it to the college football playoff. If they remain undefeated and win the ACC championship. This is a great dark horse team. They surprised me a lot. I didn't even have them even running for the ACC championship, but they're having an impressive year starting off the season undefeated so far, and I think with the home field advantage, I'm going to have to go with the Yellow Jackets over the Duke Blue Devils. Next game was a nominee for Game of the Week, an SEC showdown between number three, Mississippi State, hosting number two, Auburn. Now, this is going to be a great matchup between Auburn quarterback Nick Marshall and Dak Prescott, the Mississippi State quarterback, who's actually a great dark horse and another front runner for this year's Heisman Trophy. He's having an impressive year throwing the football as well as running the football. Now, between these two players, the more total yards actually belongs to Dak Prescott, which is very surprising because I expect a lot higher from um, Nick Marshall this upcoming season. He was actually one of my uh, nominees at the end of the year for this year's Heisman. But Dak Prescott has a, a definitely caught my attention, and he ha definitely has been very one of the most exciting players in college football. I do like him a lot. Now, for this matchup, 
due to the fact that Mississippi State is a great team and they beat a good Texas Long um, Texas A&M team last week. I'm going to have to go with another upset with going the Bulldogs over the Tigers, despite the fact that the Tigers crushed um, LSU last week 41-7. Their offense is very explosive, but I think with the momentum going towards the Bulldogs, I'm going to have to go with the Mississippi State Bulldogs as a good underdog and an upset, another upset this week. Uh, a, another ACC showdown between um, L, um, Louis, Louisville at Clemson. This is going to be a good game for you guys to watch. Now, Louisville's actually 5-1 and one with the, without Teddy Bridgewater, who's now in the National Football League, and without their previous coach and Charlie Strong, and they're still starting off the season off 5-1. and one. Will Gardner should be back this upcoming week. He practiced fully on Tuesday dealing with a knee injury, so he should be available to play against the Tigers in this matchup. Now, for Clemson, they have a great freshman quarterback and the Sean Watson, who's been doing very well throwing the football. 12 touchdown passes to just one interception. Now, on the defensive side, they have a great um, player in Vic Beasley, who's actually third in the nation, tied third in the nation with seven sacks. He's having an impressive year so far and definitely even raising his draft status for 2015's NFL Draft. Now, this game is all going to boil down to the defense. For Clemson, they actually averaged 22 points allowed per game compared to 12.7 from Louisville. Now, I believe that Clemson had to deal with tougher competition. Now, they had suffered two defeats to Georgia and a close overtime loss to Florida, to Florida State. But they played Florida State without Jamin Winston. So, I have to go with Louisville in this one. They definitely have impressed me. And starting off with their week one win over Miami due to their speed, they have great speed on defense and I think they will do enough good of a tough job to pull off a victory. Next game we need to talk about a Pac-12 matchup between a, a two one-loss teams. UCLA is hosting number 12 Oregon. UCLA is now ranked 18th. Now 18th overall. Now this is going to be the hardest matchup to predict who will win this game. But I'm going to have to go with the um, Ducks in this one. I think they're going to rebound from last week's loss. UCLA has been a little bit inconsistent so far this season. Up and down. And they was that was a big surprise with their loss last week to Utah at Brett Hundley at the helm at quarterback. Despite the fact that this is another home field advantage, I'm going to have to go with the away team in this one. Next game, number seven, Alabama is going to be traveling to Arkansas to face the Razorbacks. Now, when is the Razorbacks is going to start winning some SEC matchups? And in this game, this is an easy one for me. I'm going to have to go with the Crimson Tide over the Razorbacks. The Razorbacks is going to depend on running the football very effectively to set up the pass and pass the football well when needed. But they're going to try to establish the run to set up the pass in this matchup. And I think because of uh, Alabama's offense and stopping the run, I think that's going to be too much for Arkansas. So I'm going to have to go with Alabama winning that matchup. Next game, another Pac-12 showdown between do both these two teams have similar uh, um, rank um, um, records. 5-4-1 Washington is going to be traveling to California to face 4-1 the Cal, Cal Bears. This is going to be an interesting matchup for you guys. I'm going to have to go with California in this one. They're averaging 50 points per game. One of the top on uh, um, playmakers uh, um, plays so far this season. I think they're second overall in points, and I think they have a good quarterback and and and, and, and Jared Goff. This is a different. This, this is definitely a must game for you guys to watch. I'm gonna have to go with California over Washington. Next game, an LSU game. LSU is gonna be traveling to the swamp to face Florida. Now Florida's been struggling offensively. Now for LSU, they're starting off their season off with 0-2 games and against the SEC opponents. I think they're going to get their first win at the Swamp in this matchup. Next game, another SEC showdown. Number three, Ole Miss against number 14, Texas A&M. Now, this is another match who could, who could have possibly made my game of the week, but I had to go with another particular matchup for you guys. Now, this is all going to boil down to Ole Miss's defense. Their defense has been playing great this season, and I'm going to have to go with the Rebels in this one. They're on a good run, and if they lose this matchup, this, this, their season could go downhill for there the, 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 unless they rebound, but I highly doubt they, rebound, they will rebound if they lose this game, so they really Really know what's at stake with this one. They had a big win last week against Alabama, ranking third overall. This is an impressive team, and hopefully their offense will do just enough for this game. I'm going to have to go with Ole Miss in this one. I think Bolo Wallace is going to have another good game throwing the football. He just needs to hold out with the mistakes in this game. And last but not least, number 10, Arizona is going to be hosting USC. This is another upset alert, and last week, Arizona upset Oregon at Eugene. And with so much momentum and and, and, and how energized this team is, especially coming off of a win on the road at 
Eugene. There's no way I have to go. There's no way I have to go against um, uh, Arizona in this one. I'm gonna have to go with the Wildcats over the Trojans. Now, last week's um, USC lost to Arizona State due to a hail mary pass. They're looking to try to rebound in that, and but I think they're pros they're, they should be out of the Pac-12 race coming towards the end of the season with this loss against Arizona. Arizona can make a run for the Pac-12 championship. I think it could be between them, Arizona State, and UCLA to represent the South of this conference. So I'm going to have to go with Arizona over USC. Now, the next time I'm going to catch you guys will actually will be tomorrow where I will present to you guys my game of the week. Talk about the keys of victory for both these two teams as well as my prediction. Thank you for watching today's blogs. From the football source, I'm your man, McCall. Be easy.